Huskers finish off a perfect season at home. Their ninth win of the year, 28-7 over Maryland. It's the Sunday quarterback. Sean, an emotional senior day. Uh, did it even catch you by a little surprise? Because there was a lot of emotion pregame. Yeah, just such a special class. Uh, uh, first of all, kind of the core guys like Tommy Armstrong, Jordan Westerkamp, Josh Banderas, Nate Gary. Then you had the Sam Fultz. Uh, angle tight end, and then you've got a great group of walk-ons, and that's why this was a, one of the bigger senior classes. I think nearly 30 guys honored here today. Uh, so just, yeah, when you have that large of a senior class with this many key guys a part of it, uh, it definitely led to an emotional start here on Saturday. You mentioned Sam Fultz, you know, he had a lot of uh, relationships with the guys on the team, but you know a guy like Riker Fife who went to high school with him, and Spencer Lindsay who has to come in and and relieve Drew Brown who got dinged up. I mean, w what a day for those two individuals, especially Fife who who got his first win as a quarterback, the starting quarterback here at Nebraska. Yeah, it, to me it was really fitting that a Grand Island guy that was Sam Fultz's high school quarterback, childhood friend, and athletic you know teammate mm -hmm. all through life leads the Huskers home on what would have been Sam Fultz's final game here at Memorial Stadium. So I, I don't think he could have drew it up any better. And, it, you know, I think somewhere inside number 27 was out there today with Riker, just kind of guiding him through this game because Riker even said there was a lot of pressure on him to come out here, Andy, and play well. And uh, I think he eased in. It wasn't by any means the best game by a quarterback, but it was definitely all that Nebraska needed here to win. Yeah, no turnovers for Riker Fife. So big. He was 23 of 37, 220. Uh, through the air with a touchdown and it wasn't just Fife in terms of senior contributions it was guys like Jordan Westerkamp with a, a season high eight catches and Terrell Newby also had a big Brandon day. Riley had Brandon a big day. Riley had a big day so uh, and these are just offensive guys on defense you can go down the list in terms of Josh Banderas and Michael Rosati and this was a full team effort with really showing you the senior leadership yeah it was really just kind of one of those hey let's go out here let's take care of business yeah. everybody yeah. do their job we're better than Maryland. If we just do our job, we're going to win this game handily. And that's exactly what Nebraska did. You know, that, it, it kind of had a, a lull to it in the second half. Uh, but games like this, I think, are going to have that, especially when you get up 28 nothing, considering the circumstances. And all but one play Maryland had, it was nearly a perfect game by the defense. Yeah, Maryland gains on the day 270 yards, though they get 92 on that long touchdown. But only 11 rushing yards. And after the game, more than one person said holding Maryland to 11 rushing yards. This is a team that averaged well over 200. They're third in the Big Ten. That was huge. And the, and the five sacks are accounted in that sure, number. Absolutely. But even take away the sack loss yardage, Maryland's running backs only had like 30 or 40 yards mm -hmm. total in the game. And, you know, that that's the bread and butter. This is a run-first spread offense. They averaged over 200, 250 a game. And, and Nebraska, yeah, if they were going to let Maryland have success on the ground, it was going to be a much tougher game. And they knew that, and uh, they took it away. Short week, meaningful football straight ahead. What do you see for the short week? We still don't know. Obviously, the big question is, is Tommy going to play? Yeah, you look at the Tommy situation. Uh, I talked to a couple of people, you know, athletic trainer backgrounds, and they've said with hamstrings, week one is critical. You've got to be off it for week one. Week two, you can get a guy ready. So that is the question. Can they get Tommy Armstrong ready in just one week uh, here and get him out at Iowa on Friday or, or will be Riker Fife? And I don't think we're going to have a really good feel of that, Andy, until like Tuesday or Wednesday. Well, we're going to find out. It's the Black Friday Heroes game, the yearly affair between Iowa and Nebraska. The Huskers still have hopes to win the Big Ten West title, but they have to beat the Hawkeyes in Iowa City on Friday.